Hi everybody and welcome back to Greater Manchester Stories. This episode's guest is Edward Hulton, who's got a, another surprising story about incompetence, about covering up of tax funded services. And this is especially interesting, especially upsetting because it involves a 12 year old girl who is neglected. So first of all, welcome Edward to the show. Thank you. So let's jump into it. You've got a Greater Manchester story what's your story about 12 years ago um my daughter she's profoundly autistic dubbing continent non-verbal um the school go to um bendrig outbound trust and bendrig did an amazing job they're they're solid on this amy went twice the third time she went she came back um i was uh, showing amy and as I was showering her, I got to a private parts and I I just saw um, a bloody mess. Um, I contacted, contacted the police, went to hospital with uh, with Amy's mum, Claire, and uh, the doctor said that it was contact, it was uric acid burns presenting as contact dermatitis. It just looked like you'd taken a razor and ripped off all the skin. Uh, it was, I I still can't believe what I looked at. So, um, I, I've got a history of care and support, so I started to treat it the best way uh, I knew. I contacted the school and I said to the head that Amy won't be in for a couple of days because of what had happened, and the head just laughed at me, which I did not appreciate. The head, uh, the head of the school laughed at you for raising concerns? Yes. She was um, incompetent. There's nothing wrong with home economics teachers, but she was a home economics teacher who got the job on the understanding that she would pursue the qualifications for being kept, which she never did. Uh, that's the story in itself. So we went through the uh, complaint process and it was uh, ignored. It was, it was just nothing was found. I had to go to the tribunal to get Amy moved to Warrington to Foxwood which is an amazing school. And I had to send in the photograph I've taken, redacted. But I had I sent in the photograph as evidence as why I wanted him to leave the school. And it was only at that point that we can accept that they weren't going to keep hold of Amy and a lot of money, because don't forget, special needs kids come with a lot of money. Um, so that was 2012. I got re-elected in 2000. Uh, 2002. I got re-elected in 2004 and I was then able to deal with it. Can I just jump in? There? What do you mean by re-elected? I used to be an elected ward councillor for Wigan NBC for Lowton East, the ward of Lowton East. Right. Um, this, this election, I am not uh, elected anymore, uh, but I got re-elected to that same seat in 2004. Me and James Bundy, who's now the MP for Lee, um, he was my colleague um, we just literally went in to the council building the next day and said we'd like to speak to the chief exec, please, and sat down. Very, very quickly, we got shown in, and the director of um, young people, children's young people services was there. I want to use her name, but I shouldn't. She um, said, we, we told that and um, the chief exec what had happened, wonderful lady, she was obviously very, very concerned. The director said, what's your problem? You had an investigation. And a couple of times I tried to explain what had happened and that this was an issue with the children not being protected and with and then there was clearly a problem and nothing was being done to rectify yeah. it. To be fair, if I'd had an apology, this wouldn't have happened. Okay, there would have been yeah. none of this. So... I found, I found a group of other parents, a few other parents were in the same position. And because I got re-elected, I had the ability to force the council to do, to hold an external investigation, which we did. And all of our complaints were found. The chief, um, the director retired yeah. and the head teacher retired, the deputy head teacher retired. Um, the school was taken over by another school because it was just, it, it was probably the best school in the country. 
Salford. I've, last thing I heard, Salford had the, the old head teacher, Martin, uh, a wonderful man who could have a kidney if he wanted. He, he's that good, especially in his kids. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the, that, that's that's the crux of the story. You've got a system that covered up. Um, we, we call it abuse because we feel it is abuse of our children. Oh, absolutely is abuse. Absolutely is abuse. The neglect is abuse. Exactly. You know, it is. Um, the system uh, refused to accept that it was at fault and then it went, it covered up the abuse of one one um, young man like that. I mean, he was, this is too far for him. Um, he's got parts of his brain missing at the same school Amy was at. He was pushed backwards that hard, his tiny little frame pushed solid oak and glass panel doors two metres wide, wide open, he went flying through. That was witnessed by a parent governor and the investigation found no problem. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> For people listening, well, what people need to understand is special needs children not only not only do they need safeguarding they need extra safeguarding because they're even more vulnerable than other children because they many of them don't have the communication skills to talk about their abuse or to understand there is abuse they need extra safeguarding that's that that is instrumental what you just said every child that i was able to get supported was non-verbal Every, every child that couldn't speak was abused. Where I, I, I had heard the recordings of a child had a tape recorder, you know, an MP3 recorder, put into his wheelchair, stuck out the way, and you can hear a member of staff screaming at the child. There is a video recording of a social worker saying to a parent, the social worker knew the video camera was there, obviously forgot, that within council, it, you are asked to write reports very, very loosely, so it can be open to interpretation. So when you say, well, I need a lift, well, or, or a, you know, um, a, um, a hoist, say, well, maybe you don't need a hoist, maybe you don't need a bathroom adaptation. So there are many issues surrounding this. And don't forget, you just get a grant from the government to do all this work. So going out your way not to do it only hurts people. It's not helping anybody. You're not saving money because you get the money for it. So this just appears to be people acting in a, in a cruel way because they can do, which makes no sense. Oh, the other explanation is, yeah, it's not their money. It's not the council's money, but it's extra work for me. Absolutely. I might have, I might have to fill the form in. I might have to check. Do you know what? I'd rather you not have it because it's extra work for me. I used to be a civil servant and I wanted to get a bathroom conversion for Amy uh, because she needs a big shower. So um, I asked the council and they went, oh, nothing we can do for you, pal. As a civil servant, I spoke to, I think it's called HASREPS, like this, um, the PCS union, it's their bit that helps staff. And the PCS guy said, you need to ask the council for a disabled, disablement facilities grant. I was the councillor, right? And I went, oh, what? The Disablement Facilities Grant. Private private people, private houses like I was in. Um, you, the council will come in, assess what you need, and then they will pay for the work to be done. And what you can also do is you can take that money, put your money into it so that it can look nice. I just spent like five grand doing the bathroom, and then I just had to have it converted. So this guy walks in, I had um, a moisture um, reacting fan so that when it got moist, the fan came on. I just had a new shower mixer that was to European standards, so for heat. Everything had been done like that. This guy walks in and said, oh yeah, I'll, slip a, I'll slap a load of white tails on there, I'll put half the stick back the board so I could put a rail on. I didn't want the rail, right? Amy can't support her own weight by her hand, so it wouldn't help. I, I'll do, and I said, have you actually looked at the bathroom? He went, no. I said, well, well, there's, there's, 
there's a moisture activated found there. That mixer tap is, is brand new and it's the European standards for heat. Anything that he'd said would have looked disgusting and out of character, and they hadn't assessed the situation. So I was able to buy more tiles and maxi tiles that I'd just bought. And, you know, I was able to do a nice job. Where we are now, um, I needed to have safety rails put down uh, on and extended steps for Amy so she could get out of the bungalow to the car. And this guy came, I said, oh, I don't know anything about steps. I do ramps. And he said, I couldn't put you a ramp here. So I was elected. This this thing, because I was elected, I'm able to pick up the phone and say, this guy's an idiot. Send some of it back to me. He's talking about. Most people can't do that. So I get some to social workers. I said, send somebody else out. And the guy that came out that did step said, yeah, yeah. And I, I said, what I want is a concrete flag, a set of bricks, then a concrete crack, and that going down. He said, that's exactly what I'm going to do. But because I have the authority to say that's not good enough, I was able to fix it. I've been called, I'm in Wigan, I've been called into other boroughs to help residents. Twice I've been called into Salford. The last one, the last one, Salford Council. Um, unfortunately, the, the lady has just passed away. I've got to go to funeral next week. Uh, an old friend of mine, um, his mum was really quite unwell. Social services went out and they said, you need like a new damp course, you need um, a stair lift, you need an electric hoist, you need a bath. She hadn't had a bath in 18 months, right? She couldn't wash herself for 18 months. And uh, how was it? So that report goes some social... So by the way, that report, it, it, it means you go and do it. There's no question. Social worker is a very serious position to hold, right? Apparently, they said it to me. How has he said we're not doing that? So my mate said, see what you can do. They got most of the work that they need done because they were scared that because I'm quite well known around um, Manchester councils. As soon as I got involved, I said, I'm not interested. I want the work doing. And, and then the work was done. They had a massive damp issue. Um, bricks, the brickwork was a mess. They needed... Um, um, a hoist, they needed a stair lift, the bathroom needed to be converted so the lady could, could get so clean. All over the country, but all over Great Manchester, people need help and they need you, <laughs> I'll be honest. Well, hopefully if I'm elected, you know, there's things I can do. Um, going back to your story, I think what is apt of your story is you as an elected councillor, you didn't know everything, but you knew who to ask for things, People will respond to you because you're a counsellor. The average person in Greater Manchester doesn't have any of that. They don't know who to ring. They ring the council. They don't, they don't know who to speak to. If they get through, they're put on hold. They get told, no, that's not right. So they go, oh, it mustn't be right then and go away. It's only when we have people like you and there's thousands of you across Greater Manchester who fight for other residents to make sure they get the services they're entitled to. These aren't favours. This isn't begging. These are services that people are entitled to. But incompetent, lazy council staff in this case are a hindrance, are a barrier for people improving their quality of life. I walked out of school with two GCSEs, G grade English and math, sounds the first year to go through it. So it's not like I'm particularly, I mean, I, I did. I went to uni a couple of years ago, but it's not as if I'm particularly intelligent. I'm not. I'm just some guy from Salford. I was born in Eccles. Right? I, I, I'm a Salford Manchester lad. I'm nothing special. I was just prepared to say that's not good enough. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. No, and that's the lesson from this podcast today is do not be browbeaten by bureaucrats. Do not be intimidated by the council or any or any level of government. You are a citizen of this country and you have rights and you need to make sure you stand up for your rights that other people fought for and do not be bullied and do not do not be browbeaten down because you're entitled to services and we're entitled to a competent service as well. How long did it take your daughter to get over the acid burns? Um, physically, uh, I've 
three weeks. Um, emotionally, um, not yet. When I finally got Amy out of uh, that school, her whole after school club was near the old school. And there was, there was two ways to get to it. And one of the ways was driving past the old school. I picked her up from, from a new school after the first day. Amy was loving it. And I told her what we were going to do. We we're going to go. And we drove past the entrance to the old school. And she freaked out. She literally freaked out in the car. That, that, that tells the story just in one incident. That tells the story there. I had to stop driving past. I had to go a longer way just so that she, she knew she wasn't going back to that school. That's extremely upsetting, that is. That's extremely as, upsetting. As a daddy, it is, yeah. Yeah, that's very upsetting. Because obviously, as, as a man, the first thing I want to do is, is, you know, put somebody's lights out. But as a dad, I have to stay here and look after my baby. So it's it's very conflicted when, when that happens. It genuinely is because the, I, you have to say to yourself, I have to be a man, and a man in this situation looks after his child. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Edward, it's a great story. It's a sad story. Thank you for sharing that with us. If I'm elected next year, I've had many people who've been telling me I need to look at social services um, and I need to be looking at some of these things, and I will. Um, I can't change everything as mayor, but what I can promise to do is shine a big light on many of these issues because if we can embarrass the people at the top they'll improve those services themselves and i will embarrass those people who are running these services if those services are failing no more cover-ups nick what you just said is the first step i used to fix the problem for amy i was able to shine a light that is the first step everything else follows you just need to find the right people yeah absolutely, that's absolutely right i've done it you are right yeah well, pass my love on to your daughter. I'm glad the physical pain's gone, and I hope over time she gets over that emotional pain as well. It's working. Good, good. Thank you for coming on and sharing your story. My pleasure, Nick. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for letting me on. See you later. Bye, Nick. Bye-bye.